Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of the dictionary. First word is accountability, noun from 1770. The quality or state of being accountable, especially an obligation or willingness to accept responsibility or to account for one's actions, as in public officials lacking accountability. Accountable, adjective from 14th century, one, subject to giving an account. Answerable is the synonym, as in held her accountable for the damage. Two, capable of being accounted for. Explainable is the synonym, and responsible is another synonym. Accountableness is a noun. Accountably is an adverb. Accountancy, noun from 1836, the profession or practice of accounting. Next we have accountant, first form of two. Noun from 15th century, one, one that gives an account or is accountable. Two, one who is skilled in the practice of accounting or who is in charge of public or private accounts. Accountantship is a noun. Second form of the word accountant, adjective from 15th century, obsolete. Synonyms are accountable and answerable, as in I stand accountant for as great a sin, and that's from Shakespeare. Next we have account executive, noun from 1931. A business executive, as in an advertising agency, responsible for dealing with a client's account. Accounting is the next word, A-C-C-O-U-N-T-I-N-G, noun from 1713. One, the system of recording and summarizing business and financial transactions and analyzing, verifying, and reporting the results. Also, the principles and procedures of accounting. 2a. Work done in accounting or by accountants. 2b. An instance of applied accounting or of the settling or presenting of accountants. 3 is a synonym account 3, and I think that's just saying uh, to go to the third definition of the word account, which we already read. And just yesterday, I ran into a friend who is actually getting into doing some accounting work for a company. So that's a little coincidence there. Next, we have account payable. Noun from 1812, the balance due to a creditor on a current account. Next is account receivable, receivable or accounts receiv receivable. Why can't I say that word? 1812, a balance due from a debtor on a current account. Next, we have the word, we're getting away from this account stuff. Uh, how is this pronounced? Acouter? Acouter, I think. A-C-C-O-U-T-R-E or T-E-R. This is a verb, it says V-T, from 1596, to provide with equipment or furnishings. Outfit is a synonym. Um, and another synonym is furnish. Etymology for this is French from accoutre, accoutreur, which is from the Middle French uh, accoustreur, which is formed by adding A plus castur, C-O-U-S-T-U-R-E, which means seam, S-E-A-M. This is also from, uh, I think, a Latin word, consultara, and there's more at the word couture, C O U T U R E. And I've seen that word a lot over the years, and I've never really understood what it means. So in a couple of years, I'll get to the word couture, because it's not like I can look it up now. Next, we have, I'm going to try to pronounce this correctly, accoutrement, A C C O U T R E M E N T. I have definitely heard this word. Uh, you could also just say accoutrement. I think that would be the English pronunciation. This is a noun from 1549, 1A. Synonyms are equipment and trappings, specifically a soldier's outfit, usually not including clothes and weapons, and that's usually used in the plural. 1B, an accessory item of clothing or equipment, again usually used in the plural. Number two is in archaic form, the act of accoutring. <laughs> 
I don't know why I thought that was funny. Number three, and identifying an often superficial characteristic or device used in plural usually again, as in accoutrements from power that define our diplomacy. That's from Elizabeth Drew. And I'm not sure if the, uh, the T at the end of the word gets pronounced or not, which is why I said it the way I said it. Next and last word for today is a credit. A-C-C-R-E-D-I-T. Verb, V-T. And I still haven't looked up what V-T or V-I or V-B, what's the, what's the difference between those? Uh, this is from 1535. One, to give official authorization to or approval of. One A, to provide with credentials, especially to send an envoy with letters of authorization. 1B, to recognize to recognize or vouch for as conforming with a standard. 1C, to recognize an educational institution as maintaining standards that qu- qualify the graduates for admission to higher or more specialized institutions or for, or for professional practice. 2. To consider or recognize as outstanding. 3. Synonyms are attribute and credit. And uh, you can see more at the synonym approve. Accreditable is the adjective. Accreditation, accreditation is the noun. Um, etymology for this is from the Latin accreditus, plural, uh, sorry, from the uh, verb accredere, accredere, which means to give credence. And that's from uh, combining ad plus credere, which means to believe. And there's more at the word creed, C-R-E-E-D. And that is it for this episode. We just finished page eight. And next episode, we'll be at the top of page nine. And uh, the word that we will start with in that episode is accrete, A-C-C-R-E-T. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you in the next episode. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds, and welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. First word today is accrete, A-C-C-R-E-T-E. Verb, accreted, accretine. Uh, I also see V-I, which I just learned, means that it is an intransitive verb. Do I know what that means? No, I do not. If you want to tell me what that means, you can... Email me at dictionarypod at gmail.com, dictionarypod on Twitter, and uh, there's a Facebook page and a Patreon page, by the way. All those links are in the episode description. This is from 1784, to grow or become attached by accretion. And now we have the transitive form, to cause, to adhere, or become attached. Accumulative, no, accumulate is a synonym. Next is accretion, noun, from 1615. Number one, the process of growth or enlargement by a gradual buildup, as A, 1A, increase by external addition or accumulation, as by adhesion of external parts or particles. 1B, the increase of land by the action of natural forces. 2. A product of accretion, especially an extraneous addition, as in accretions of grime. Accretionary is an adjective, and accretive is also an adjective. This is from the Latin accretion, accretio, which is from the verb accrescere, A-C-C-R-E-S-C-E-R-E. I think C's are always a K sound. And there's more information at the word accrue. Next, we have accretion disc, noun from 1972. A disc of usually gaseous matter surrounding a massive celestial object as a black hole in which the matter gradually spirals in toward and accretes onto the object as a result of gravitational attraction. Next is accrual, form 1, A-C-C-R-U-A-L, noun from 1880, 
One, the action or process of accruing. Two, something that accrues or has accrued. That is a funny sounding word now, accrued. Next、uh, is the second form of accrual, the adjective from 1917, relating to or being a method of accounting that recognizes income when earned and expenses when incurred, regardless of when cash is received or dispersed. And it says compare to the word cash. Accrue, A C C R U E, verb. Uh, intransitive form of the verb from 15th century. One, to come into existence as a legally enforceable claim. Two, A, to come about as a natural growth, increase, or advantage, as in the wisdom that accrues with age. I am definitely experiencing a little bit of wisdom as I get older. Two, B, To come as a direct result of some state or action, as in rewards due to the feminine will accrue to me. That's from Germain Greer. Three, to accumulate or be added periodically, as in interest accrues on a daily basis. Now we have the transitive form of the verb to accumulate or have due after a period of time, as in accrue vacation time. Accruable is an adjective. Accruement is a noun. Next, we have A C C T. This is an abbreviation for account or accountant. Acculturate, or acculturate. That I think is more accurate. This is a transitive verb from 1930 to change through acculturation. Next, we have acculturation. Noun from 1880. One, cultural modification of an individual, group, or people by adapting to or borrowing traits from another culture. Also, a merging of cultures as a result of prolonged contact. Two, the process by which a human being acquires the culture of a particular society from infancy. Acculturational is an adjective. And acculturative is an adjective. Next, we have accumulate, a transitive verb, the transitive form from 15th century, to gather or pile up, especially little by little. Amass is a synonym, m、uh, a m a s s, as in accumulate a fortune. The intransitive form is to increase gradually in quantity or number. Some etymology for this one: Latin from accumulatus, accumulatus,、uh, which is from the verb accumulare, accumulare. Yep,、uh, which is formed by combining ad and cumulare, which means to heap up. And there's more at the word cumulate, c u m u l a t e. Next is accumulation. Noun from 15th century one, something that has accumulated or has been accumulated. Two, the action or process of accumulating, the state of being or having accumulated. Again, that's a weird word now. Three, increase or growth by addition, especially when continuous or repeated, as in accumulation of interest. And、uh, just the fact that these words are starting to f-、uh, sound funny reminds me of、um, an animation I made. I I didn't have anything to do with the audio. I I borrowed it from a comedy sketch group called the Vestibules, and、uh, I always thought it was funny. So I did an independent study rotoscope animation project of it with puppets and myself.、Um, and I will put the link in the description again. I just did the animation. I actually didn't even have time to finish the animation, so it's technically an unfinished work. And、uh, but the audio is hilarious, and、uh, I hope you like it. Next, we have accumulative. Sometimes I have a、uh, trouble figuring out how to pronounce words because they have the、uh, it has the dots in between the syllables, even though it's a word I know and I know how to pronounce it. Sometimes it just looks weird to me. This is an adjective from 1647. One, we just have the synonym 
cumulative, as in an age of rapid and accumulative or cumulative change. Two, tending or given to accumulation. Accumulatively, whew, that's a mouthful, is an adverb, and accumulativeness, another mouthful, is a noun. And next word, and I think it'll be the last for today, accumulator. I'm assuming this is one who accumulates. This is a noun from 1748. One that accumulates. Holy crap, it literally said what I just said. I find that funny. Okay, one that accumulates as a, a device as in a hydraulic system in which a fluid is collected and especially in which it is kept under pressure as a means of storing energy. B, this is the uh, British form, storage battery. That's the synonym, storage battery. And C, a part, as in a computer, where numbers are totaled or stored. And that will end the episode. Thank you so much for listening. I do hope you check out the video that I was talking about. And by the way, it is called Bulbous Bouffant. Both funny words. And until next time, this is Spencer reading the dictionary. Hello again. Welcome to the dictionary, you word nerds. And if you're not a word nerd, maybe you will become a word nerd. I think I'm becoming one. First word for today is accuracy. A-C-C-U-R-A-C-Y. Just in case you didn't know how to spell it. This is a noun from 1662. One. Freedom from mistake or error. Correctness is uh, a synonym. 2A. Conformity to truth or to a standard or model. And the synonym is exactness. 2B. Degree of conformity of a measure to a standard or a true value. And it says compare to the word precision, definition 2A. Next we have accurate. This is an adjective from 1596. One, free from error as the result of care, as in an accurate diagnosis. Two, conforming exactly to truth or to a standard. Synonym is exact, as in providing accurate color. Like a printer or a monitor, you would want it to provide accurate color. Three, able to give an accurate result as in an accurate gauge. Synonym is correct. Accurately is an adverb. Accurateness is a noun. Some etymology is uh, from Latin, accuratus, which is from the verb accurare, which means to take care of. And that is formed from ad plus cura, C-U-R-A, which means care. And uh, I was actually just talking with a couple of co-workers today about um, kind of where English comes from. Um, and I was able to say, I already knew it a little bit, but after reading the dictionary, I was able to say most of our words come from Latin, some Greek. Um, there's definitely some French in there, but the French actually usually comes from a Latin word as well. So really, our language really comes from uh, Latin, if you didn't already know that. Moving on, we have accursed, A-C-C-U-R-S-E-D. It looks like you could also spell it A-C-C-U-R-S-T. So the the E-D becomes a T. I've never seen anything like that. This is from the 13th century. One, being under or as if under a curse, as in an accursed people. Two, synonym is Damnable, D-A-M-N-A-B-L-E. Accursedly is an adverb. Accursedness is the noun. And the etymology is from the Middle English accursed with only one C, which is from the word accursen, which means to consign to destruction with a curse. Uh, And this looks like it is formed from combining A plus cursen, which means to curse. And there's more at the word abide, A-B-I-D-E. I I have no idea why abide is related to accursed, but okay. Next, we have an abbreviation, A-C-C-U-S. That's abbreviation for accusative. And I'm sure we'll see that word very shortly. 
Next, we have accusal. I assume that's how it's pronounced, and I'm looking at the phonetics. Yes, that's how it is pronounced. A C C U S A L. Noun from 1594. It just has the synonym accusation, which is our next word. Noun from 14th century. One, the act of accusing, the state or fact of being accused. Two, a charge of wrongdoing. Next is accusative, form one.、And、this is、uh, an adjective from the 15th century. One, of relating to. Or being the grammatical case that marks the direct object of a verb, or the object of any of several prepositions. Two, we have the synonym accusatory, as in an accusative tone. And the etymology says it's from Middle English, which is from the Anglo-French or Latin.、Uh, the Anglo-French word is accusatif, a c u s a t i f. And the Latin is、uh, accusativus. Accusativus. It goes over to the second line, so it was a little weird.、Um, which is from accusatus. Accusatus, which is from the verb accusare, and it doesn't say what that word means. Maybe we read it earlier. Next form of accusative. This is a noun, circa 1620. The accusative case of a language. A form in the accusative case. I'm、uh, not sure what the accusative case is. Next, we have accusatory, adjective from 14th century, containing or expressing accusation. Accusing is a synonym, as in an accusatory look. And next is accuse, a c c u s e, verb, accused, accusing. And、uh, the transitive form from 14th century, one, to charge with a fault or offense. Blame is a synonym. Two, to charge with an offense judiciously or by a public process. Intransitive form says to bring an accusation. Accuser is a noun, and accusingly is an adverb. Some、uh, etymology: Middle English from the Anglo-French. Accuser or accusé. Not sure the pronunciation of French, as you probably are aware. And that is from the Latin accusare, which means to call to account. And that is from、uh, combining ad plus causa, c a u s a or causa, which means lawsuit. And next is accused, a c c u s e d, noun from fifteen sixty seven. One charged with an offense, especially the defendant in a criminal case. Next is a custom, a c c u s t o m, verb transitive from the fifteenth century, to make familiar with something through use or experience. Accustomation is a noun. Etymology says Middle English from Anglo French. Accustomé. I'm just going to say it that way, and that is from combining a a or a d plus custom or custumé, which means custom, and I think that last part is from Latin. Next we have accustomed. It's the last word plus e d. Adjective from 15th century. One, often used or practiced. Customary is a synonym, as in her accustomed cheerfulness. Two, adapted to existing conditions, as in eyes accustomed to the dark. Three, being in the habit or custom, as in accustomed to winning. Synonym is usual. Accustomedness is a noun. Next word, and I think it will be. Well, now we can do the next one too.、Uh, next word is A C D C.、Uh, it's it's a it's actually a surprisingly short definition.、Um, capital all caps. There is a slash in between the C、uh, between A C and D C.、Uh, this is an adjective. Let's see, circa nineteen sixty. So the official definition just says the synonym bisexual. 
definition 1b. So there uh, theoretically will be more information there, um, but there's also some other information in brackets which, which I will read. It says, from the likening of a bisexual person to an electrical appliance which can operate on either alternating or direct current. I don't understand what alternating and direct current have anything to do with a bisexual person. I'm, I have to say, I'm having some issues with this dictionary. I, I, I'll have to look up this definition maybe a little bit more from another, another place. Um, it seems like there are some odd definitions that could be potentially biased in a little bit, a little, a little biased. Um, I have to look into maybe getting a new dictionary because I, I honestly can't understand what the comparison is that they're making here. Um, I know ACDC stands for alternating current and direct current, which I'm glad they put in there. But, you know, like I said, how that's related to a, a bisexual person doesn't make any sense to me. So apologies for that little rant. I will, uh, I will have to look this up and maybe I'll add in a little info here. Hello. Yes, I did decide to uh, go ahead and interject here. Um, so a few things to talk about. First of all, this is many weeks later. Um, as you, uh, if you are a regular listener of the podcast, you uh, notice that I took a break. Um, and part of that was because um, I didn't really like the dictionary, as you heard. Um, I haven't changed it. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details about that whole thing, but I decided to start um, posting episodes again. And um, just a, a few days ago, I did that and uh, figured I need to, needed to uh, finish this up. Um, so... ACDC. Um, first of all, I have to apologize that uh, I, I said that I didn't understand how they were comparing bisexuality to ACDC. Um, obviously, I think it's pretty clear why that comparison was made. Um, being able to run on both and bisexual people are interested in both men and women. Um, so th there's first I have to say that. Um, I think my bigger issue uh, after kind of re-listening to what I what I said was that uh, it first it was um, it was really the only wow I'm saying first a lot sorry um, it was kind of the only definition that it gave it didn't even officially give the definition of alternating current and direct current um, maybe that'll come in later under alternating um, but it didn't it didn't really give that it did mention it but it didn't give the definition and so that was really surprising to me um, I did go ahead and look up the dictionary uh, on, a, on another source um, and the very first definition uh, says electricity number one alternating current or direct current yeah that should be in there uh, and then the second one says adjective slang one, sexually responsive to both men and women, bisexual. That's much more clear. First of all, it says slang. It's not, it's not a day-to-day -day usage, or at least it shouldn't be a day-to-day -day, uh, used form of ACDC. Um, it is a slang term. Maybe not necessarily a nice one, Maybe it's a term of endearment in the bisexual world. I don't know. I'll have to ask somebody. That's not going to get added to this podcast. Um, but it's it's a slang term, um, and it and it specifically says sexually responsive to both men and women. It's um, in the other definition said something like comparing it to an an apply or comparing a bisexual person to an appliance that runs on both alternating current and direct current. Anyway, I'm babbling on a while about this. I just wanted to throw that in and say officially, yes, I'm, I'm back doing this podcast. Um, I'm not changing the dictionary and uh, you will, you will have to deal with it. I will have to deal with it, but you know, maybe it's a good thing that um, it, it will force me to, to question some things, to learn some things, to find other definitions that, that might make more sense. I don't know. I'm just doing this off the seat of my pants. Uh, I'm learning the dictionary. Hopefully you're learning the dictionary as well. And now I have to stop so I can go edit this and uh, post it because this episode was supp supposed to be posted uh, earlier this morning. Thank you and goodbye.
The next word and the last word for today, it's a little bit of a long definition. We have the word ace. This is the first form. And you know what? Because it's the first form, I'm doing this on the fly, people. I'm not going to do it. So the last word for today is ACDC. Thank you for listening, and I will talk to you in the future. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. This is me, Spencer, reading to you from The Dictionary. I still haven't changed it. I'm recording four at once, so I'm obviously not going to be switching dictionaries. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go ahead and listen to the last episode. I had a little rant in there. First word for today is the first form of the word ace, A-C-E. This is a noun from the 14th century, 1A, a die-faced marker with one spot. 1B, a playing card marked in its center with one pip. 1C, a domino end marked with one spot. 2, a very small amount or degree. A synonym is particle. And as a fan of They Might Be Giants, I have to give a little shout-out to the song Particle Man. 3. A point scored especially on a service, as in tennis or handball, that an opponent fails to touch. 4. A golf score of one stroke on a hole, also a hole made in one stroke. 5. A combat pilot who has brought down at least five enemy airplanes. 6a, a person who excels at something, as in a computer ace. 6b, the best pitcher on a baseball team, as in the ace of the staff. And there's a phrase that uses the word ace, ace in the hole. 1, an ace dealt face down to a player, as in stud poker, and not exposed until the showdown. 2, an effective and decisive argument or resource held in reserve. And we have another phrase, within an ace of, on the point of, very near to, as in came within an ace of winning. Next, we have the second form of the word ace from 1923. And uh, just looking back a little bit, uh, some etymology of the word ace. It is from the Middle English, Maybe it's pronounced the same, but it's spelled A-S, and that is from the Anglo-French and from Latin, which means unit or a copper coin. So, back to the second form of ace from 1923. One, to score an ace against an opponent. Two, to make a hole in golf in one stroke. And a hole in golf is uh, in parentheses. So sometimes if I give a little pause or say uh, some words in a slightly different way, that means it's in parentheses. Three, to gain a decisive advantage over. Defeat, D-E-F-E-A-T, is a synonym. I'm not talking about my feet. And that is usually used with the word out. For A, to earn a high grade on as an examination especially to get an A on, so like to get an A on a paper or a test. For B, to perform extremely well in, as in he aced every subject. And we have a third form of the word ace, adjective from 1926, of first or high rank or quality, as in an ace mechanic. Next we have an abbreviation, A-C-E, all caps, and that is for the American Council on Education. Next, we have a suffix, A-C-E-A-E. And I th- yes, there is an example, so I'll get to the pronunciation of it. This is um, a noun, or it's a suffix for nouns. Um, not sure of the best way to explain that. Plants of the nature of, that's the definition. Um, as in the word rosacea. So the word is pronounced asia. And then there's a little tag on at the end. It says in names of families of plants. Moving on, next word is acedia, A-C-E-D-I-A. This is a noun from 1607. It just has the synonyms apathy and boredom. 
And the etymology looks like it's from Latin and Greek. Um, I think it's pronounced Akedia, A K E D E I A, which is com- uh, formed by combining A and Kedos, K E D O S, which means care or grief. And there's more at the word hate. Next, we have ACE inhibitor, and ACE is all caps. This is a noun from 1982. ACE stands for angiotensin converting enzyme. So the definition of ACE inhibitor is any of a group of antihypertensive drugs as captopril that relax arteries and promote renal excretion of salt and water by inhibiting the activity of angiotensin converting enzyme, also known as ACE. Next, we have aceldama. I think that's how it's pronounced, aceldama, capital A, C-E-L-D-A-M-A. This is a noun from the 14th century. The potter's field bought with the money Judas had been paid for betraying Christ. This is from the Greek akeldama, from Aram Hakel Dema, literally the field of blood. Not exactly sure what words I just said. Um, and again, this is an example of um, why I think this dictionary might be a little biased. I have no problem with, with religious words in here, but I really haven't seen anything that's um, non-Christian in, in some form. Um, so, you know, you can't get all words from all religions or languages. Obviously, this is an English dictionary, but it, it does seem a little bit odd. Um, you know, Judaism is related to Christianity. Again, I might need to change dictionaries. If you have a suggestion, again, please email me at dictionarypod at gmail.com. Hey, just a quick little interjection here. Um, I did go ahead and look up Aceldama on another source, um, and it says, uh, number one, the place near Jerusalem purchased with the bribe Judas took for betraying Jesus, and that's from Acts 1.18.19. I assume that's something in the Bible, which I have never read. Um, and two, any place of slaughter and bloodshed, um, and the origin does confirm a field of blood. Uh, so just wanted to throw this in just because it's, um, I feel like it's a little bit more uh, specific, just uh, understandable a little bit better. Uh, back to the program. Enough with that. Moving on is acellular. Wow, I was going to read that very differently. A- yeah, A-C-E-L-L-U-L-A-R. Acellular. Adjective from 1940. One containing no cells, as in acellular vaccines. Two, not divided into cells, consisting of a single complex cell, used especially of protozoa and ciliates. And ciliates is spelled with a C at the beginning. Next we have acentric, A-C-E-N-T-R-I-C, adjective from 1937, Lacking a centromere, and centromere is spelled C-E-N-T-R-O-M-E-R-E, as in acentric chromosomes, or chromosomes. Next we have another suffix, A-C-E-O-U-S. This is for adjectives, 1A, characterized by, full of, as in cetaceous. So the the, uh, the suffix is pronounced aceous, which is similar to the other one we had, acia, as in rosacea. Uh, one B for aceous, consisting of, as in diatomaceous, having the nature or form of, as in tuffaceous or tufaceous. Uh, that is spelled T-U-F-F A-C-E-O-U-S. Not sure what that means. Not sure what uh, diatomaceous means either. Or cetaceous. Uh, 2A. 
of or relating to a group of animals typified by such a form, as in cetaceous, uh, C-E-T, plus the suffix, or characterized by such a feature, as in crustaceous, and to be of or relating to a plant family, as in solanaceous. Next, we have the word acephalus, not snuffleupagus from Sesame Street. This is acephalus, A-C-E-P-H-A-L-O-U-S, adjective from circa 1731, one, lacking a head or having the head reduced, two, lacking a governing head or chief. The etymology is from the Greek akephalus, A-C-E-P-H-A-L-O-S. I just think it's interesting that a lot of uh, Latin and Greek k sounds, either spelled with a C or a K, turned into a s s sound in English. And I'm, I'm just curious why that happened. Uh, this is from combining A plus kephali, which means head. And there's more at the word cephalic, C-E-P-H-A-L-I-C. Next word is ooh, A-C-E-Q-U-I-A. I think this is pronounced asakia, asakia. This is a noun from 1844. It has the word southwest in italics. And then the definition is an irrigation ditch or canal. And this is from Spanish, one of the only Spanish ones we've seen. Um, from, I don't know what A-R is, but the word is, oh, Arab, um, al sakia al dash S A Q I Y A, or maybe it's Al Sakia, something like that, which means the irrigation ditch. Next word is Acerb, A C E R B, adjective from 1853. Uh, the only word in the definition is Acerbic, that's the synonym. So it's this acerb plus IC at the end, as in acerb humor. And I'm pretty sure we'll be seeing that word in the next episode. But the uh, etymology for this one is French or Latin. In French, it says acerbe, A-C-E-R-B-E. Now I want some some sorbet or something, Um, which is from the Latin acerbus or acerbus, which is akin to the Latin Acer or occur, A C E R. Acer, maybe that's how it's pronounced, um, which means sharp. Um, so we can assume that um, acerbic humor is sharp humor or maybe witty humor, something like that. Um, and there's more at the word edge um, in terms of etymology, E D G E. And last word for today is acerbate. A-C-E-R-B-A-T-E. Get your head out of the gutter. Circa 1731. All we have are a couple synonyms. Irritate and exacerbate. E-X-A-S-P-E-R-A-T. I think I pronounced it wrong. Exasperate. There we go. Exasperate. Uh, That is, by the way, a, a transitive verb. That will be the end of this episode. We have read three quarters of page nine. Next episode, I will finish page nine. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer reading the dictionary. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Thank you very much for joining me on this next episode of the dictionary. First word for today. And uh, I do recommend that you listening listen to these in order because the dictionary and all the words in it will be completely confusing to you if you don't. Um, But this first word is actually related to um, one of the last words in the last episode. This word is acerbic, A-C-E-R-B-I-C. This is an adjective from 1865. Definition is acid in temper, mood, or tone, as in acerbic commentary, or 
an acerbic reviewer. Acerbically is the adverb. Next we have acerbity, a c e r b i t y, a noun from 1572, the quality of being acerbic. Next is acerola. I think that's the pr correct pronunciation. A c e r o l a, a noun from 1945, relatively recently. Any of various West Indian shrubs, genus Malpighia of the family Malpighiaceae. Oh, look, our suffix has come into play.、Um, with mildly acid, cherry-like fruits, very rich in vitamin C. And I'll just read the entire definition without the、uh, genus information. Any of various West Indian shrubs with mildly acid, cherry-like fruits, very rich in vitamin C. And there is some etymology.、Um, it looks like it's saying American Spanish, from Spanish, regular Spanish,、uh, which says fruit of a shrub,、uh, Cretaceous azurolus, and that is from、uh, I believe the Arab al zurur. A no, there's no l, just a. Oh, this is confusing. A parentheses dash z u. Apostrophe R U R, so I'm not sure what that. It doesn't say what the definition of that is. Moving on, this is a sesulfame, a sesulfame. Oh, a sesulfame K, A C E S U L F A M E dash capital K. This is a noun from 1982. Even more recent than、uh, the one from 1945, a white crystalline or crystalline powder, C4H4KNO4S, that is a cyclic organic potassium salt, has a sweetness much more intense than sucrose, and is used as a non-caloric sweetener in foods and beverages, called also acesulfame potassium. A cecil fame is it is spelled the same way. Okay,、uh, I think K is the、uh, periodic table symbol for potassium,、um, if I'm not mistaken. And I would not have known that off the top of my head. I'm only maybe remembering that because they, it mentions potassium here.、Um, and the etymology is、uh, a few different words or or forms of words combined together.、Um, first, we have acet, a c e t. Plus sulf s u l f. I'm guessing that's sulfur.、Um, plus a m e, as in aspartame. Oh, is acesulfame k aspartame? Hmm. Interesting. If it is, that stuff is not good for you. Moving on, we have a、uh, prefix. It looks like a set a c e t, which I think is the same prefix from the last one. Or aceto, a c e t o, which is a combined form, com combination form, from doesn't give me a year. Acetic acid, acetic acid,、um, or acetyl, or as in acetyl, a c e t y l. This is from French and Latin acet,、um, acetum or acetum, which means vinegar. Akin to the Latin acere or acere, which means to be sour, and acer a c e r, which means sharp. And there's more at the word edge. Next we have acetabulum, acetabulum. I think that's right. Noun from 1661. One, a ventral sucker of a trematode. T R E M A T O D E. It's not a toad or a frog. I don't know what a trematode is. Maybe I will look that up. Two, the cup-shaped socket in the hip bone. Hmm. Acetabular is an adjective, and the etymology says、uh, it's from Latin, literally, the word vinegar cup, from acetum or acetum, which means vinegar. So. I wonder 
I wonder how a word that means vinegar or vinegar cup turned into a ventral sucker or a cup-shaped socket. I don't think vinegar is... I don't think it cares about vinegar at all. I think it's just the cup shape is how they got to this word. Moving on. Acetal? Acet, yeah, acetal. Noun. Uh, it's spelled A-C-E-T-A-L from 1853. Any of various compounds characterized by the grouping C-O-R-2. The O-R is in parentheses. These are uh, chemistry symbols and obtained especially by heating aldehydes or ketones with alcohols. The etymology uh, looks like it's taking um, azet, A-Z-E-T, or aket, A-C-E-T, plus um, the first two letters al from the word alcohol. Um, So if you know much about science and chemistry, maybe you understand why they put all that together. Um, Although I could look back at acet, A-C-E-T, and it's um, acetic acid. So acetic acid and alcohol, maybe that's what acetal is. Next is acetaldehyde, another chemistry word, noun from 1877, a colorless, volatile, water-soluble liquid, aldehyde, used chiefly in organic synthesis. And the uh, chemical uh, form is C2H4O. Next, we have acetamide, A-C-E-T-A-M-I-D-E. Noun, from 1869, a white crystalline amide, or amide, of acetic acid used especially as a solvent and in organic synthesis. And the chemical symbols are C2H5NO. Next we have acetaminophen. Acetaminophen, noun from 1958. A crystalline compound that is a hydroxy derivative of acetanilide, acetanilide, or acetanilide, and is used in chemical synthesis and in medicine to relieve pain and fever. And the uh, chemical symbols are C8H9NO2. This is a very science-heavy episode. If you're not into that, I apologize. And if you are, you're welcome. Next, we have acetanilide. I think that's the word I had trouble with in the previous one. Um, Or acetanilid, with no E at the end. This is a noun, circa 1864, a white crystalline compound that is derived from aniline and acetic acid and is used especially to relieve pain or fever. Very similar to the last one. Chemical symbol is C8H9NO. Next we have acetate, A-C-E-T-A-T-E, noun from 1788, one, a salt or ester of acetic acid. Ester is spelled E-S-T-E-R. Two, we have the synonym cellulose acetate, or cellulose acetate. Also, something as a textile fiber made from cellulose acetate. Three, a phonograph recording disc made of an acetate or coated with cellulose acetate. Next is acetalom. Acetalamide, 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 I don't know what that is, A-C-E-T-A-Z-O-L-A-M-I-D-E. This is from 1954, a diuretic drug used especially in the treatment of edema associated with congestive heart failure and of glaucoma and in the, pre- and in the prevention and treatment of altitude sickness. And the chemical symbols are C4H6N4O3S2. Sounds like I'm just making up letters and numbers, putting them together, but I'm not. Next we have acetic acid. This is, uh, it's saying that this is related to um, vinegar again. 1758, a colorless pungent liquid acid that is the chief acid of vinegar. There we go 
and that is used especially in synthesis as of plastics. And the chemical symbols are C2H4O2. Next is acetic anhydride. That's two separate words. First word is acetic, A-C-E-T-I-C, -E and the second word is A-N-H-Y-D-R-I-D-E, noun from 1866, a colorless liquid with a pungent odor used in organic synthesis as of cellulose acetate and aspirin. Chemical symbols are C4H6O3. Acetify, A-C-E-T-I-F-Y. This is a transitive verb circa 1828. To turn into acetic acid or vinegar. Acetification is a noun. And let's see, do we do this next one? I'm going to turn the page. Let's see how long the definition is. Yeah, it's not too bad. We'll do this one. Aceto, whoa, acetoacetic acid. So acetoacetic is actually one word, A-C-E-T-O-A-C-E-T-I-C. -E -E this is a noun, and there's a bunch of etymology that I'm not even going to read because I don't think it's going to help anybody, and I won't describe it correctly. Circa 1900, turn the page to page 10. An unstable acid that is a ketone body found in abnormal quantities in the blood and urine in some conditions, as diabetes. And the chem chemical symbol is C4H6O3. And that is the end of the episode. These headphones are squeezing my head and it hurts. So... I will be back later to record more. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, this is Spencer signing off from The Dictionary. Goodbye. Hello. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. This is my first recording after uh, taking a break. Um, as you probably have seen, I have posted a few episodes, I think maybe five, no, seven, something like that. Uh, but anyway... Let's get into it. First word for today. This is the top of page 10. Acetone. A-C-E-T-O-N-E. -E. This is a noun from 1837. This is weird getting, uh, have to get used to this again. All right. A volatile, fragrant, flammable liquid, ketone C3H6O, used chiefly as a solvent and in organic synthesis, and found in abnormal quantities in diabetic urine. Acetonic is an adjective. Uh, this is from the German aceton, A-Z-E-T-O-N, from the Latin acetum, A-C-E-T-U-M, and that's it. All right, acetonatril, acetonatril, I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, noun from 1848, the colorless liquid nitrile CH3CN of acetic acid used chiefly in organic synthesis and as a solvent. Next, acetophenetidine, nope, acetophenetidine, aceto, sorry, uh, just bear with me. Acetophenitidin. Where's the emphasis on the ni? Nitidin. Aceto, acetophenitidin. Acetophenitidin. I, I want to turn that into a song or something. This is a noun from 1887. Oh, geez, the definition is going to be way shorter than me trying to pronounce the word. It's just a synonym, uh, which is Phenacetin, phenacetin, uh, P-H-E-N-A-C-E-T-I-N. By the way, the word is spelled A-C-E-T-O-P-H-E-N-E-T-I-D-I-N. Acetophenet, no, whatever. Moving on. Acetus, A-C-E-T-O-U-S, adjective from the 14th century, Relating to or producing vinegar, as in acetous fermentation. Uh, synonyms are sour and 
vine- vinegary. Uh, I've seen obviously the word vinegar, but vinegary, I feel like I've never seen spelled out. It's spelled vine gary, V I N E G A R Y. It's just vinegar with the Y at the end. All right, next is acetyl, A C E T Y L, another chemistry term. Noun circa 1864. And sorry if the uh, the microphone exploded there. Uh, the radical CH3CO of acetic acid often used in combination. Thanks. Next is acetylate. A-C-E-T-Y-L-A-T-E. This is a transitive verb from 1864. To introduce the acetyl radical into a compound. Acetylation is a noun and acetylative, uh, yeah, acetylative, I think that's how it's pronounced, is an adjective. Next, acetylcholine. So we have the word acetyl with choline at the end. C-H-O-L-I-N-E. Noun from 1906. A neurotransmitter, C7H16NO2, released at auton... Why am I having trouble with this word? Autonomic synapses and neuromuscular junctions and formed enzymatically in the tissues from choline. Next is a fun one. Acetylcholine esterase. Let's see, is that is that correct? Acetylcholine esterase. Yep, I believe that's right. Should I spell it? Okay. A C E T Y L C H O L I N E S T E R A S E. Noun from 1937. An enzyme that occurs especially in some nerve endings and in the blood and promotes the hydrolysis of acetylcholine. Next is, okay, so it's the word acetyl, and then the next word is capital C, lowercase o, capital A. Uh, And that is a noun from 1951. I guess it's pronounced uh, coe. Yeah, I think that's, it actually has a pronunciation for that. So it's acetyl coe, and the uh, definition is just the synonym acetyl coenzyme A. So the co is from coenzyme, and then the uh, A is A. So it's kind of like uh, an acronym, but not really. And the next is that actual word, acetyl coenzyme A, noun from 1952. Now, wait a minute. Acetyl coe is from 1951, but acetyl coenzyme A is from 1952. Somebody didn't do their research. Uh, Okay. A compound, C25H38N7O17P3S, formed as an intermediate in metabolism and active as a coenzyme in biological acetylations. How many more scientific words are we going to have? Just a few. Acetylene, A-C-E-T-Y-L-E-N-E. I, I want to put that word to the song Jolene. Acetylene? I really don't know that song, so I'm not going to do that. Noun from 1851. A colorless, gaseous hydrocarbon. HC, a few dashes, and then CH. And the few dashes look like an equal sign with a third dash at the bottom. I, I don't know what that means in chemistry. Uh, So this is a colorless, gaseous hydrocarbon used chiefly in organic synthesis and as a fuel, as in welding and soldering, or as some people say, soldering, because that's how it's spelled. Uh, This and acetylenic is the adjective. Another fun one, acetylsalic ilate, acetyl, acetyl, oh, yeah, yeah. Acetyl, I'm trying to say the word and look at the pronunciation at the same time. Acetyl, acetyl, so, lysolate. Acet, oh, is it because the, the C is after the Y? Right, so acetyl salicylate. 
salicylate. I think that's right. Noun from 1893, a salt or ester of acetyl... Now, see, now they have it all spelled out without the dots. A salt or ester of acetyl salicylic acid. And the next word is acetyl acetyl salicylic acid. Acetyl salicylic acid. Say it with me now. Acetyl salicylic acid. Noun from 1864. Uh, It's just the synonym aspirin one. So the I think it's the first definition of the word aspirin, which we will get to in the future. Next is, is this AC Ducey? AC Ducey. Yep, I think that's what it is. A C E Y dash D E U C E Y. AC Ducey. Uh, and there's an alternative alternative spelling without the last e in Ducey. Noun from 1925, a variation of backgammon in which a throw of a 1-2 wins extra turns. I tried to play backgammon once and could not understand what, how, and I just didn't understand. Uh, So, if I ever play again, maybe I will see AC Ducey in the uh, instructions. Okay, Archaean. Or Archean, uh, capital A, C H A E A N. This is the first form of it. Uh, this is an adjective from 1567 of relating to or characteristic of Archaea or Archaea, uh, broadly of or relating to Greece. And then we have the second form, a noun from 1607, a native or inhabitant of Archaea, broadly Greek. So it can be uh, the person or just something relating to Archaea or Greek. And next, and uh, probably the last word for the for today, Archimenean, adjective from 1717 of or relating to the Archimenid, Archimenids, Archimenid, no, blah, Ar- Archimenids. And uh, I'm actually going to read the next one because it is related, and it is Archimenid. Ar- oh, no, Arche- Archimenid. Archimenid. Noun from 1889. A member of the ruling house of ancient Persia, generally considered historically important from the assumption of power by Cyrus the Great, 1559 B.C., to the overthrow of Darius III, 330 B.C. Do we even use B.C. anymore? I thought we used something else. Uh, Some etymology for this one. Greek, obviously, Archimenides from Archimenes, 7th century B.C., king of Persia, founder of the dynasty, plus Ides, which is a uh, patronymic, suffix. All right, that will be the end of the episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer reading the dictionary. Goodbye. Hello, welcome to another episode of the dictionary. We are on page 10, the bottom half of the first column. We were reading some scientific uh, chemical words and some Greek words uh, in the last episode. We are starting off today with a word I don't know how to pronounce, as many of them are. Uh, let's see. Achalasia. Achalasia. A C H A L A S I A. This is a noun from 1914. Failure of a ring of muscle as the anal sphincter or one of the esophagus, to relax. Uh, Was not expecting that. Okay, so without the part in parentheses, it says, failure of a ring of muscle to relax. And so uh, a, a muscle that's in a ring is the anal sphincter or the esophagus. Those are both uh, muscle muscles in the shape of a ring. So uh, some etymology This is from the um, NL, is that New Latin? I don't remember. Uh, From um, A plus the Greek 
uh, calasis, calasis, which means slackening, achalasia. So that would be a medical term. Next is achates, A-C-H-A-T-E-S, noun from the 14th century, Latin, a faithful companion of uh, Aeneas, don't know how to pronounce that, in Virgil's Aeneid. Uh, and Aeneas, I'm assuming that's a person, A-E-N-E-A-S. I should probably be a little bit more well-read. I don't think I've ever read the Aeneid. Next is ache, first form of it, A-C-H-E. Uh, intransitive verb from uh, before the 12th century, 1A, to suffer a usually dull persistent pain, as in an aching back. I've definitely had that. 1B, to become distressed or disturbed, uh, as with anxiety or regret, as in aching with sadness. 1C, to feel compassion, as in my heart aches for those poor people. 2. To experience a painful eagerness or yearning, yearning, as in he is aching to go. And the etymology is from the Middle English, aken, A-K-E-N, uh, which is from the Old English, aken, A-C-A-N. Second form of ache is a noun also before the 12th century, one, a usually dull persistent pain. That was the same as before, uh, but I guess that was an intransitive verb, so, but this is a noun. And number two, a condition marked by aching. Next we have uh, akin, A-C-H-E-N-E, akin, noun from 1855, a small, dry, what is this word, indehiscent? Indehiscent, one-seeded fruit, uh, as of a sunflower, developing from a simple ovary and usually having a thin pericarp attached to the seed at only one point. Man, I am learning so many words and things. Um, all right, so this is plant-related. A small, dry, indehiscent, one-seeded fruit, developing from a simple ovary and usually having a thin pericarp attached to the seed at only one point. Uh, I, maybe I'll look up indehiscent on my own, but uh, if you want to hear it, you'll either have to look it up on your own or wait until I get there. That, that word is spelled I-N-D-E-H-I-S-C-E-N-T. I'm very curious what that is. Uh, but, uh, etymology. Uh, new Latin... Again, I think that's what that stands for. Uh, Achenium, A-C-H-A-E-N-I-U-M, which is from A plus the Greek kanain. Uh, Don't know about the pronunciation there. Which means to gape, yawn. Uh, and there's more at the word yawn. Okay, acheron. Uh, capital A-C-H-E-R-O-N. Noun from 14th century, a river in Hades. Uh, that gets back to our uh, Greek mythology. I don't think I ever realized... I wasn't, isn't that the river Styx? Or maybe that's a different river in Hades. Or maybe that's not in Hades and I'm just remembering it wrong. I don't know. But this is Acheron. Uh, that is from the Greek Acheron, spelled basically the same way. Next is, uh, how do we pronounce this one? Acheulean. Acheulean. A-C-H-E-U-L-E-A-N or L-I-A-N. Both are acceptable. Uh, this is an adjective from 1877. Of or relating to a lower Paleolithic culture originating in Africa and typified by bifacial tools with round cutting edges. Etymology, etymology for this is uh, French achouline, uh, A-C-H-E-U-L-E-E-N, and the first of the double N has an accent on it. 
which is from Saint Achoul near uh, Amiens, France. I'm sure I did not pronounce that correctly. Next we have um, looks like another French word, a cheval. I think it's a. Uh, a with an accent over it, cheval. The pronunciation is telling me that is an, that it is an A with an umlaut over the top. Um, but to be perfectly honest, I that doesn't really help me. Um, yeah, sorry. Adverb, 1832. One, with a leg on each side. Synonym is astride. Two, in such a way as to be played or chanced simultaneously on two numbers or events, as in roulette, a cheval. Um, etymology, French, literally means on horseback. Hmm. I'm sure some of you horseback riders already knew that one. Next, we have achieve, A-C-H-I-E-V-E, a word I'm familiar with, unlike a lot of these other ones. Uh, this is a verb from what year? Oh, here, 14th century. One, to carry out successfully, as uh, accomplish is the synonym, as in achieve a gradual increase in production. Two, to get or attain as the result of exertion. Reach is the synonym, as in achieved a high degree of skill or achieved greatness. And uh, the intransitive verb definition is to attain a desired end or aim, become successful. S uh, another synonym, uh, it says see, perform, the word perform. Achievable is the adjective and achiever is the noun. Uh, the etymology is from the Middle English. Uh, achieven or achieven, A-C-H-E-V-E-N, which is from the Anglo-French uh, achiver, achiver. I'm not even going to say I don't know how to pronounce these words because you can just assume that going forward I will mispronounce many of these words. Uh, which means, so uh, the Anglo-French achiver means to finish. And that is from uh, adding A plus uh, uh, chef, C-H-E-F, which means end or head. And there's more at the word chief. So it's, uh, you know, a, a chef in a kitchen uh, sounds pretty obvious. They are the head of the kitchen. Um, and then uh, the, the chief, is, it's clearly related. Uh, chef and chief spelled similarly. The chief is the head of a, of a tribe or something like that. Um, ba, ba, ba. Next is the word achieved. Adjective from the uh, 15th century, brought to or marked by a high degree of development or refinement. Synonym is finished, as in fully achieved poems. Do you ever wonder how they come up with these uh, example phrases or sentences? Uh, fully achieved poems just kind of seems like an odd phrase to me. Um, there was another one earlier that seemed a little bit weird. But I guess they, uh, I guess they get the point across. Next is achievement, noun from the fifteenth century. One, the act of achieving. Accomplishment is the synonym. Two a, a result gained by effort. Two b, a great or heroic deed. Three, the quality and quantity of a student's work. And the synonym is feat. F e a t. That is uh, some, uh, a feat of, uh, well, I'm not thinking quick enough. Uh, feat is something that you do, not the feat that you stand on. Next is Achilles, back to Greek. Uh, this is a noun from before the 12th century. The greatest warrior among the Greeks at Troy and slayer of Hector. Uh, this is Latin from the Greek Achilles. And next is Achilles' heel. I was actually just going to tell a story about Achilles' heel, um, more specifically Achilles' tendon, which is right after that. Um, I remember as a kid, my dad was telling me a story. I don't know if it was him who injured his Achilles' tendon or if 
a friend of I think it was a friend of his uh, tore his Achilles tendon or something like that. That is not something that you want to do. That sounds incredibly painful and uh, will really screw up your walking because you won't be able to. Uh, so Achilles heel noun uh, from 1840. The definition is just a vulnerable point. Um, you know, so it, this is more of an emotional or, or mental thing, not physically your heel. Um, it is, you know, the thing that, oh, your Achilles heel, is it's your weakness. It's the thing that will take you down. Um, the etymology is from the story that Achilles was vulnerable only in the heel. So that's why the word heel is in there. Um, Achilles tendon which is the next word, noun from 1739, the strong tendon joining the muscles in the calf of the leg to the bone of the heel. And it's also just called the Achilles. So because Achilles was uh, vulnerable in his heel, uh, medical science took his name and they put that to the tendon that runs in that same area. And if it gets injured, you will go down. Next is aching, A-C-H-I-N-G, adjective from 13th century. One, that aches, uh, as in an aching back. Two, causing or reflecting distress, deep emotion or longing, as in aching country ballads. Next is achingly, adverb from 1765. One, in an aching manner, as in achingly sad songs. Two, uh, it's just the synonyms extremely and exceedingly, as in achingly complicated. Next, we have the word uh, achiote, at, achiote, achiote. I think that's what the pronunciation is telling me. Achiote. This is a noun from 1648, a spice made from the red seed of the anato tree, also the seed from which the spice is made. Uh, the etymology says this is American Spanish from Nahuatl, uh, oh, from the Nahuatl word uh, Ashiotl, which means the anato tree. I was going to say this seems uh, Native American or American Indian, but it uh, it sounds like it's more uh, more from the South. Uh, it says American Spanish. I'm thinking, you know, this is the Mayan, Incan, Aztec region, but not necessarily from those cultures specifically. Um, all right. Next is Akiral, or no, a Akiral. Adjective from 1921, of relating to or being a molecule that is superimposable on its mirror image. Also, not chiral, C-H-I-R-A-L. I'm not 100% sure what that means, but that's what it says. A chiral. That's, that's what the word is. I don't even remember how I pronounced it before, but a chiral. So, not chiral, which is what the definition says. And next and last word for the day is achlorhydria. And let's just make sure I'm pronouncing this correctly. Achlorhydria, noun from 1892, absence of hydrochloric acid from the gastric juice. Achlorhydric is the adjective. And... Um, I'm not going to read the etymology because it's not that interesting. All right, that is it for this episode. Thank you for listening. And next, I will be recording the next episode. Thank you. Goodbye. Hello. Welcome to another episode. I am recording four episodes at once, so I apologize if my voice is getting a little bit raspy. But first episode for today is... A chondrit, a chondrit, a c h o n d r i t e, noun, circa 1904, a stony meteorite without rounded grains. A chondritic is the adjective. 
Next is、uh, achondroplasia. 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 Da da ba do da. I don't know what I'm singing. Noun from 1881. A genetic disorder disturbing normal growth of cartilage, resulting in a form of dwarfism characterized by a usually normal torso and shortened limbs. And usually inherited as an autosomal dominant trait.、Uh, achondroplastic is the adjective. And again, I'm not going to read the etymology. Next is achu, a c h o o, also spelled a h c h o o. This is an interjection from 1882, used to represent the sound of a sneeze. Yes, it does.、Uh, speaking of sneezes,、um, recently, whenever I've over the last few years or something,、uh, whenever I hear people sneeze, the standard thing to say is "bless you." That's what we say in America, typically in English.、Um, I'm not particularly religious. I'm actually not really religious at all.、Um, but I know that "bless you" has some pretty religious.、Um, It it comes from a, a very religious place, and I'm not against religion, as I've said before,、um, per se. But I it didn't really make sense for me to say "bless you." I you know, it, when people sneeze, you know, cultures all around the world,、um, you know, they think that the soul is leaving the body, so that's why they say "bless you" or you know things like that, similar to that.、Um, so I was I was curious one day, and I went and looked up、uh, what different cultures say. And you know what? What in their language? What it means? And the vast majority of cultures say something like that.、Um, bless you. Something. Something kind of spiritual, religious.、Um, something about the soul, or you know, make sure you don't die or whatever.、Um, but there was one that was the the most different to me,、um, and it was from Vietnam. And、uh, the the translation just said rice with salt. So a friend of mine went ahead and looked up some more information about this,、um, and、uh, he just found some random link. And、uh, according to what somebody says,、uh, for the first sneeze, they say、uh, "com mam," which means rice with fish sauce. And for the second sneeze, they say "com mui,"、uh, which means rice with salt. Uh, and they said, I think it kind of means "bless you." I don't know the relevance or the meaning or the situation. And then somebody else said, as my grandma used to tell, when a child sneezing means a spirit ca- is calling his or her name, then saying "komoi" rice with salt to announce to the spirit that the child is poor,、uh, they just got rice salt to eat, so the spirit would leave his or、uh, him or her alone and not make it sick. But not many people know the meaning. They just say it because everyone says it.、Um, so obviously, it still has that same kind of bless you meaning behind it. But it's something a little bit different and、uh, a little bit more fun. I thought. So going forward, I think I'm just gonna say rice with salt when somebody sneezes, and then I'll probably have to go and explain this whole story to them. That was a long, long tangent. I apologize for that, but I hope you found it a tiny bit interesting. Next is. Acromat, A C H R O M A T, noun from 1900, and it just has the synonym acromatic lens. Next we have acromatic, and we are going to get to acromatic lens right afterwards.、Uh, so acromatic is an adjective from 1754. One, refracting light without dispersing it into its constituent colors. Giving images practically free from extraneous colors, as in an achromatic telescope. Two, not readily colored by the usual staining agents. Three, possessing no hue, being or involving black, gray, or white. Neutral is the synonym, as in achromatic visual sensations. Four, being without. Accidentals or modulation.、Uh, diatonic is the synonym, and that last one is music-related. Achromatically is the adverb. Achromatism 
is、uh, a noun, and acromatize, acromatize is the transitive verb. So,、uh, this in general sounds like,、um, I guess, when you deal with color and music, it's basically saying something in its simplest form.、Um, you know, it's not in, in terms of color, it's not being,、uh, the light is not being dispersed into its various colors. It's just normal, it's,、um, it's not chromatic, hence the A at the beginning. So, next we have achromatic lens. This is a noun from 1796. A lens made by combining lenses of different glasses having different focal powers so that the light emerging from the lens forms an image practically free of chromatic aberration. I, I do a little photography, and so chromatic aberration is、uh, a term I see,、um, and if I am remembering correctly, Um, or maybe I'm getting this close. It's when、uh, you take a picture with a lens that,、uh, if, if you take a picture with a lens that has some chromatic aberration, so it's not a perfect achromatic lens,、um, you will get a little, a little hint of colors that aren't supposed to be there. Typically, I believe it is、uh, green and magenta. So, like if you have、uh, two contrasting colors, Uh, or if you, if you have a part of your image that's very contrasty, like a very light and a very dark color next to each other,、um, you might get a little bit of a green or magenta、um, line along that edge where those colors meet.、Uh, and for you photography nerds, I apologize if I'm not getting that correctly, but I think I'm pretty close. So, obviously, the goal for lens makers is to make a perfectly achromatic lens. Doesn't happen a lot,、uh, or doesn't happen all the time.、Um, I'm actually watching some reviews, lens reviews, by this guy on YouTube,、um, Christopher Frost, I believe is his name, and he goes, he runs the gamut on the lenses, and often chromatic aberration comes up. So definitely check his stuff out. In general, if you're interested in lenses and photography and video making,、um, but also if you just want to learn a little bit more about this, check that out. Moving on, achy, A C H Y, adjective from 1864. Afflicted with aches, as in feeling tired and achy. Achiness is a noun. Next is、uh, acicular, A C I C U L A R, adjective from、uh, 1709. And there is there's a chart next to this definition, so I'm losing my place a little bit. But this looks like a short definition.、It、just means shaped like a needle, as in acicular leaves or acicular crystals. The etymology is、uh, from Latin acicula or acicula,、uh, which is、uh, dim, d- diminished, I don't know, of the Latin acus. Which means needle, plus the English a r, and there's more at the word acute. I'm not completely sure what I just read, and I'm sure I confused you even more. Apologies for that, but moving on. The next word is acid, first form of it, a c i d, adjective,、uh, from 1626. 1A, sour, sharp, or biting to the taste, as in an acid flavor. 1B, sharp, biting, or sour in manner, disposition, or nature, as in an acid individual or an acid personality. 1C, sharply clear, discerning, or pointed, as in an acid wit. I do not have that. Or acid criticism. 1D, piercingly intense and often jarring, as in acid yellow. I've never heard of acid yellow. 2A, of, of relating to or being an acid, also having the reactions or characteristics of an acid, as in acid soil or an acid solution. 2B, Of salts and esters derived by partial exchange 
of replaceable hydrogen, as in、uh, acid sodium carbonate, NaHCO3. 2C, containing or involving the use of an acid, as in, as in manufacture. That part was in parentheses. The example, as in an acid bath. 2D, marked by or resulting from an abnormally high concentration of acid, as in acid indigestion. 3. Relating to or made by a process, as in making steel. In which the furnace is lined with acidic material and an acidic slag is used. Four, rich in silica, as in acid rocks. Acid li is the adverb, and acid nis is the noun. And、uh, the etymology, just to make this simple,、uh, it comes from、uh, looks like Latin, which means to be sour. And there's more at the word acet, a c e t dash, which I believe we've already read. That is a blanking on the word, a prefix. Next is the second form of acid, and this will be the last word for today. Noun 1650. One, a sour substance, specifically any of various, typically water soluble or sour compounds. That in solution are capable of reacting with a base to form a salt, redden litmus, and have a pH less than seven. That are hydrogen-containing molecules or ions able to give up a proton to a base, or that are substances able to accept an unshared pair of electrons from a base. Whew! That may have been the longest definition I've read so far. Longest single definition. Two, something incisive, biting, or sarcastic, as in a social satire dripping with acid. And number three,、uh, it is just the synonym LSD.、Um, most of you probably know what that is. We will get to that in the future.、Um, and then acidy is the adjective. That is it for this episode. Thank you for listening. And I look forward to talking to you, but not really you, my external audio recorder, in the next episode. Thank you. Goodbye. Hello. This is the fourth episode I am recording in a row. Bottom of page ten, second column. The bottom of the second column. You know what I mean. Anyway, first word is acid fast. Acid dash fast. Adjective from 1903, not easily decolorized by acids. Next is acid head.、Uh, no, no dash in the middle, just acid head. Noun from 1966, an individual who uses LSD.、Uh, I, you know, it's similar to pothead, somebody who uses pot. But I would argue that it's.、Um, You know, it ha- would have to be somebody who uses it a lot,、um, maybe every day. Although, from what I've heard, using LSD every day might be a little intense.、Uh, but moving on, acidic, a c i d i c, adjective from 1866, one acid forming, and two just the word acid.、Uh, next is acidifier. Noun from 1796, one that acidifies, especially a substance used to increase soil acidity. And next is the word acidity, transitive verb from 1782, one to make acid. No, I'm sorry. The word in the previous definition was in fact acidity. This is acidify. That f looked like a t. So, acidify, transitive verb from 1782. One to make acid, two to convert into an acid, and acidification is a noun. Next we have, I don't know where the the emphasis is.、Uh, acid, acidimeter, acid, dim, acidimeter. I think that's right. 
This is a noun circa 1828. It's just a pH meter, meter. So it's the thing that reads the acid levels in another thing. Acid, acidimeter. And here we have acidity. Noun from 1615. One, the quality, state, or degree of being acid. So what is the acidity of this thing? Let's get an acidimeter to find out. Do we want it to be more acidic? Let's acidify it. I just used four of the most recent words. All right, uh, second definition of acidity is the state of being excessively acid. Next is uh, acidophil, acid plus O-P-H-I-L. Uh, this is a noun from 1897. Uh, a substance, tissue, or organism that stains readily with acid stains. Next is acidophilic. Adjective from 1895. One. Staining readily with acid stains. Synonym is acidophil. Two. Preferring or thriving in a relatively acid environment. So I'm guessing that would be something like an animal that lives, uh, say, in acidic water. It would be acidophilic. Next is acidophius or acidaphius. Acid, acidaphius. Sure, let's just use that. This is a noun from 1901. A lactobacillus that is added especially to dairy products as yogurt and milk or prepared as a dietary supplement is part of the normal intestinal and vaginal flora and is used therapeutically especially to promote intestinal health. Also, a preparation containing such bacteria. And that is it for that one. Next is acidosis. Noun from 1900, an abnormal condition characterized by reduced alkalinity of the blood and of the body tissues. Uh, acid, acidotic is the adjective. Next is acid phosphatase. Noun from 1949, a phosphatase as the phosphomonoesterase from the prostate gland, optimally active in acid medium. So the parentheses part was as the phosphom oh boy, as the phosphomonoesterase, phosphomonoesterase from the prostate gland. That's the parentheses part. The definition says a phosphatase optimally active in acid medium. Next is acid precipitation, noun from 1955. Precipitation as rain or snow, having increased acidity caused by environmental factors as atmospheric pollutants. I know reading these parts in parentheses can get a little bit weird, so I'll see if I can come up with a good way to deal with those. But currently I'm just going to read them through and try and make it as clear as possible. Next, acid rain. I'm guessing this is very similar to acid precipitation. Noun from 1845. Acid precipitation in the form of rain. Acid rock. Noun, 1966. Rock music with lyrics and sound relating to or suggestive of drug-induced experiences. Um, one could probably also call that LSD rock, although that just sounds weird. But that's probably where it came from. Next, acid snow. Noun from 1981, acid precipitation in the form of snow. Next is acid test. Noun from 1854, a severe or crucial test. Next is acidulate. Uh, it's the word acid plus U-L-A-T-E. A transitive verb from 1684. To make acid or slightly acid. Acidulation is a noun. Acidulant. 
is an adjective from 1830. It just has the synonym acidulous or acidulous. A C I D U L O U S. Etymology for this is、uh, from the French acidulant, which is from acidulaire, which means to acidulate. Next is acid washed. Adjective from 1987, of relating to or being a fabric or a garment. That has been treated with a bleach solution to produce a streaked or discolored appearance. I grew up in the 80s.、Uh, this was a thing with、uh, with the, with the kids that I grew up with.、Um, I honestly don't even know if I wore like acid washed jeans or anything like that. I very well may have. I wasn't really big into fashion. I probably didn't even hear the term acid washed or was aware of it until I was、uh, a bit older. Um, so yeah, this was this was not a thing I was、uh, privy to at the time. Next we have asinar or asinar, a c i n a r, adjective from 1870 of relating to or comprising an asinus, as in pancreatic asinar cells. Next is asinus. Which is what I just read, or it was in the definition I just read. This is a noun from 1751, circa 1751. Any of the small sacs terminating the ducts of some exocrine glands and lined with, with. I'm just gonna start this one over. Any of the small sacs terminating the ducts of some exocrine glands and lined with sec- secretory or secretory cells. Those are cells that secrete things.、Um, Asinus is the adjective, and I just want to make sure I'm pronouncing this correctly.、Um, Asinus. Yep, this is、uh, Latin. Hmm. Basically, it's from the word berry seed in Latin, which is maybe the、uh, the small sacs look like berry seeds. Last for today, ac. A C K. This is an abbreviation for acknowledge or acknowledgement. And just real quick, next word at the top of page eleven is ack ack. I just wanted to read that because a it sounds funny and b it is maybe related to ack. This is ack dash ack noun、uh, from nineteen twenty six. Not related at all, but I'll read it anyway. An anti aircraft gun also. Uh, an anti-aircraft fire,、um, and the etymology says,、uh, British signalman's former telephone pronunciation of AA is abbreviation for anti-aircraft. Ack ack. Why why is it air ack ack?、Um, it also just says also anti-aircraft fire. Did I read that? Not sure. Anyway, that is it for this episode. Thank you very much for listening. If I remember correctly, my email is dictionarypod at gmail dot com, and the Twitter is at dictionarypod, and、uh, the Facebook page now has an easy username, which is the dictionary pod, all one word. Again, thank you for listening.、Um, yep, that's it. Bye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode. Uh, let's get right into it. First word is "aki," a c k e e.、Uh, this is a noun from 1794. It says "origin unknown." That's a new one.、Uh, the fruit of an African tree,、uh, Bligia sapida. That's the scientific name of the soapberry family, grown in the Caribbean area, Florida, and Hawaii for its white. Or yellowish fleshy, fleshy, aril a r i l that is edible when ripe, but is poisonous when immature or overripe, and that has a toxic pink rape r a p h e attaching the aril to the seed.、Um, also, it's the the tree I guess is also called aki.、Uh, that that's a new one. I'm guessing because it's an African tree,、uh, the origin is African in nature. 
So that sounds like something I want to avoid. Uh, next word, acknowledge. Transitive verb uh, from the 15th century. One, to recognize the rights, authority, or status of. Two, to disclose knowledge of or agreement with. 3a, to express gratitude or obligation for, as in acknowledge a gift. 3b, to take notice of, as in failed to acknowledge my greeting. 3c, to make known the receipt of, as in acknowledge a letter. 4, to recognize as genuine or valid, as in acknowledge a debt. Uh, the etymology basically says that it's combining um, the AC from accord, A-C-C-O-R-D, plus the word acknowledge, uh, knowledge. And uh, we have some synonym information. Synonyms are admit, own, avow, and confess. And they mean to disclose against one's will or inclination. Acknowledge implies the disclosing of something that has been or might be concealed, as in acknowledged an earlier peccadillo. Admit implies reluctance to disclose, grant, or concede, and refers usually to facts rather than their implications, as in admitted the project was over budget. Own, O-W-N, implies acknowledging something in close relation to oneself, as in must own, I know little about computers. Avow implies boldly declaring, often in the face of hostility, hostility, uh, what one might be expected to be silent about, as in avowed that he was a revolutionary. Confess may apply to an admission of a weakness, failure, omission, or guilt, as in confessed a weakness for sweets. I definitely have that, a weakness for sweets. Um, acknowledged is the next word, adjective from 1598. Generally recognized, accepted, or admitted, as in an acknowledged expert. And acknowledgedly is the adverb. Next we have acknowledgement. This is a noun from 1594, 1a, the act of acknowledging. 1b, recognition or favorable notice of an act or achievement. 2. A thing done or given in recognition of something received. 3. A declaration or avowal of one's act or of a fact to give it legal validity. Next we have the ACL, all caps. This is a noun from 1981. Uh, it just says anterior cruciate, cruciate ligament. Um, I know that that is in the knee region, um, probably uh, connecting the, uh, the upper leg to the lower leg. And uh, a lot of uh, football players and soccer players uh, get injuries to their, to their ACL. Next we have ACLS, all caps, abbreviation for Advanced Cardiac Life Support. I hope none of you and myself ever need any of that. Next is ACLU, all caps, abbreviation for the American Civil Liberties Union. Next we have ACME, A-C-M-E, noun, uh, from 1620, the highest point or stage, also one that represents perfection of the thing expressed. And the synonym says C, summit. Uh, the etymology for this is from Greek, acme, A-K-M-E, which just means point or highest point, and there's more at the word edge. Next, a very similar word, acne, A-C-N-E, noun, uh, circa 1828, a disorder of the skin caused by inflammation of the skin glands and hair follicles, specifically a form found chiefly in adolescence and marked by pimples, especially on the, uh, on the face. Acneed is an adjective. That's, I don't think that's a word that gets used a lot, acneed. Um, the etymology is Greek from acne, A-K-N-E, means eruption of the face. Uh, yeah, acne sucks. Um, 
as an adult. I still get still get zits every once in a while. Not fun. Next is acne rosacea, noun from uh, 1833. Just has the word rosacea as uh, as a synonym, and uh, the etymology says uh, rose-colored acne. So we'll read more about that when we get to the R's. And next is a cock. Uh, all one word, A-C-O-C-K. Adjective or adverb from 1846, being in a cocked position. I'm assuming the first thing that comes to mind is uh, a gun. When you cock a gun, you can say, my gun is a cock. And I think we'll do one more for this episode. Uh, I believe this is pronounced acelomate. Acelomate. Yep, noun circa 1889. An invertebrate lacking a coelom, spelled C-O-E-L-O-M, especially one belonging to the group comprising the flatworms and nemertines and characterized by bilateral symmetry and a digestive cavity that is the only internal cavity. So yeah, I think we'll end it there. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, until next time, this is Spencer reading the dictionary.